Hello, good evening. Well, Blockbusters is coming up in about 10 minutes' time, but first, valued opinion all about Channel Island Silver. We all have our likes and dislikes. For me, I enjoy a peaceful setting to have my petit déjeuner against an apparently unending expanse of lawn and the occasional beautiful tree and a little congenial company. In this case, it's Peter Waldron from Sotheby's in London. Ah, Peter, I see Max. that we have tastes in common, don't we? Come and join me. Yes, the best this of Channel Island silver and our fresco picnic, what could be better? Oh, I've just been admiring some of these wonderful pieces here. Which one in particular, that? This one. Has, it's a lovely uh, wine cup, Jersey wine cup. I was reading the inscription. It seems to have been given to a young gentleman by his great-grandfather in 1756. I think the nice thing about it is that it's got a, an extra bit of interest in this lovely engraving, nice hand. and. Uh, a very nice touch mark. But look at the edge on that. So see how thick it is still. Never been used hardly at all. Lovely thick. Yes. Quite extraordinary. Now just tell us what you mean by a touch mark. Right. Well, yeah, all the silversmiths um, the world over that were proud of their work certainly would sign it in some way. And um, here we have uh, the mark of Jean Gavet, which is an IG below a crown. And uh, this would be carved on a, on, on a uh, punch, which would be stamped into the silver. And you can see just how that comes through on the other side here. It does. It's been punched in. Now, occasionally, that would have been knocked back, and you wouldn't see it on the inside. But there, you've got a lovely impression of the mark on the inside, too. Does touch come from the French touche, then? Touche. I mean, it, touch stone, it was all to do with the testing of the quality of uh, the silver in the first place. And, uh, and the touchstone was the magical thing which would say whether the silver quality was right or not. What is the purpose of a handled cup there, as you've got, as opposed to that nicer, simpler style? Eh? Well, it's, <clears throat> it's an interesting one, that. I mean, I think they probably were both used for drinking. These are often called loving cups in that they were had two handles, so they could be passed from one person to the other. Mm -hmm. um, but I suppose, really, they, uh, you know, were used mainly as, as display in, in this form, because they're fairly large and perhaps used occasionally on ceremonial in, in occasions. Most silver were, was made for use rather than decoration, wasn't it? Yes. I mean, especially the items we're looking at here, which are very simple and, and, and plain pieces. Um, with very little embellishment except for the engraving. I mean, this wonderfully bold coffee pot here um, has a bit of engraving on. Coat of arms, uh, an obvious way of identifying ownership. Unfortunately, in this case, um, to my mind, been added at a later date because this is a very fine and heavy mid-18th century pot. Would it not be engraved in, ever in the mid-18th? Oh, yes, could well, been, uh, well have been so. Um, but here... If you look at the sort of sharpness of the engraving and uh, the, the harshness of it, and also um, this rather sort of flamboyant motto banner down here, very much a, a, a 19th century sort of touch of affectation as opposed to a, a rather understated and nice uh, Baroque coat of arms which one would have hoped for on this. Victorian display again. Mm. What about the, the shape, to my mind, that, that might have come from a German Stein, the feeling of that? Well, I suppose, yes, I mean, it, it is, but it's, uh, it, I suppose, the coffee first introduced into this part of the world uh, in, the, in the late 17th century. Um, where did they first start making 
coffee pots to their style. Maybe it was a Stein that, that gave them the idea. It was all part of the drinking thing, but the earliest coffee pots were always conical, and I suppose the easiest, um, one of the easiest forms of, 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 of um, manufacturing something to contain a liquid. What about this chasing on the bottom of the spout? Is that original? Yes, that's all original. In fact, that that's actually cast in. Uh, you've, yeah. got a, you've got a variety of um, processes here. The actual body would be sheet, hammered sheet, which is seamed down under the handle, in all probability. Hand hammered? Hand hammered from a sheet. And this would be would be uh, sand cast and, and added on. Uh, the, the handle, I think, uh, is probably uh, later here. As with the engraving, I think a Victorian edition doesn't look quite right, I think you'll admit. It's, it should have a wood, pear wood or fruit wood handle, I think. Which have, uh, would have not conducted the heat. That's not conducted the heat, exactly. Uh, would have been, I think, would have set it off much more nicely than this rather overdoing itself one. Anyway, I have uh, a whole hamper or box of hamper or box of tricks right beside me, which uh, leads us on to some smaller pieces of Jersey silver. How about that? I, like it? I love in particular it's the simplicity altogether, but in particular, that. Yes, isn't because that Because it's so plain and easy to hold. Yeah. This is uh, what's, what's known as a dog's nose spoon, yeah. dog nose spoon, for uh, obvious reasons, for the shape. And the three prongs, or three tines, which uh, is the earliest form of, of silver silver fork, or, well, occasionally you get two, two tines well as well, but well, this was, is the earliest. Form. I was going to take you up. Surely mm. the, the twin tined fork was earlier. The twin tined fork was earlier, certainly in, in, um, in steel um, and in silver also, but uh, it led pretty quickly onto the, onto the three prongs. So when did that come in? This uh, would have come into British silver in the, in the late um, 17th century. You keep having to say British, don't you, because everything changes when you go abroad. Well, that's true. That's true. Um, in, in France, in particular, they were further ahead of us in, in the UK. Um, but that's a, that's a lovely one. I like that. You said further ahead. What do you mean behind? I mean uh, further in advance of fashion than we were. Do you agree with that? I think so. I suppose they were. It all depends how you look at it. I'm looking at it from an English point of view. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, go on. Well, uh, what else have we got? All sorts of... If it was more fussy, then I wouldn't agree with you. I love that simple... Do you know what that is? No. It's a caudal thing. Better than that. This is for feeding the baby. Well, it's somewhere near. Near enough. It was, it's called a pap boat, actually. Pap boat, and would have been filled with a rather mushy sort of sil uh, stew or puree of vegetables, and then the baby would suck it from this end. And I think he'd gone on sucking a little too long because we've got teeth marks in the end there. So we have. You shouldn't have been with that for very long, I don't think. Real tooth marks, yes. yes. Teeth marks, you're teeth right. Marks. Teeth marks. This is uh, um, an 18th and, and 19th century invention, which probably lasted, I suppose, for about 100 years, from 1730 to 1830. Nanny rammed much that, that uh, lip into the recalcitrant mouth. That's it. Mm -hmm. That's it. Um, Oh. It's like a brand tub, this. It is. Oh, I it? say, what a whopper. Isn't it? Isn't it just? Now, that's by the uh, same silversmith as one we were talking about earlier, the wine cup. Well, Used for what? Well, I suppose for serving something, probably not in the kitchen. Often called basting spoons, but I can't imagine you cooking know, the gravy tin with that. that's the origin of the expression, serving you right. Well, you got basted with that? Serving you right. I wonder. Maybe. Could well be. Um, this is fiddle pattern. Um, named because of the shape of the top of the handle here. Uh, is it always the handle that names it? No, not always. Um, usually it is, but occasionally it's named after the bowl because I'm sure you've heard of the term rat tail. Yes. This hasn't got a rat tail. It's got what my the grandma... The rat tail comes down here, doesn't rat it? rat tail normally would come right down. My grandma used to call these bunny tails and the long ones rat tails, but um, and that was used, always used to be in my childhood days. Well, it's more valuable if it's got a rat tail. Can be true. Um, but a fine spoon. Very fine spoon indeed. What else now? Uh, still keeping on that end of things. One of these? Oh. 
Oh, now what is that? A marrow spoon? That's correct. Yes, taking the uh, marrow bone jelly out. Of course, not used nowadays. Lovely on toast, but uh, most of these sold to United States, I'm afraid, as highball stirrers or something of that sort. <laughs> really very simple. And for two sizes of, of bone, obviously, the narrower and the larger. And dated? Dated about, um, well, they didn't come in until the beginning of the 18th century. Um, about 1740, 1750, that one. They change so little in form, it is sometimes very difficult to date them exactly. Mm -hmm.